This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. The next control on the toolbox that I wish to look at is the combo box. And we're going to look at the list box at the same time because effectively they are in essence the same thing but having different display methods. So we'll use the form template file again. Inside the Visual Basic, we already have the user form set up with an OK and cancel button and the code behind the OK button to do whatever we ask it to do. So let's go back to the form and add firstly a combo box. It's that little tool here. So again, you select, click, drag, and you get your combo box. Combo box is a drop list that shows values effectively. So we need to give the object a sensible name. So I'm going to call mine CBO months. And you can see from the rest of the properties, we can control how many columns you're going to display, which is the bound column if there are more than one column. The bound column is the one that contains the data in that we wish to select effectively from our combo box. We can change the font the foreground color, the height, number of rows that will be displayed. We have the control source. Now this is the cell that will display the value that is selected in your combo box. The row source is the range of cells that contain the data. Now at the moment, if we were to view our form, there's actually nothing in the combo box. Now we can supply the data for this combo box in two ways, either by picking up the values in a set of cells on the sheet, or by running a bit of code that places the values in there. So if I want months to be listed in here, I could go back into Excel and set up a range of 12 months, because that's how many there are in here. So January to December. And I've placed that in range N5 to N16. So that then becomes my row source for the combo box. So N5 to N16. Back into the Visual Basic, I select my combo box. I come down to the row source and I tell it to pick its values up from N5 to N16 by simply typing in N5 colon N16. Just the same way as you would effectively determine any range. Let's rerun our form and we see the drop list contains January to December. So I can then choose and this value we can then capture and use in our code or we can place it into a cell. So let's click cancel. We could put that into, say for example, A1. Run our form, choose July. Okay, see it went over into A1. Choose November. Problem is I've got nothing else to click on except OK and cancel. So if I click on one of these, the form will close, but it will change to November. So OK, and we just saw it just change to November there. Let's place a command button on here that does nothing. And what that will allow us to do is just leave this box. And you can see it responds. So that's the combo box. We're taking the values from cells on the sheet and we're putting the selected value into A1, so that's using the control source and the row source. And everything works fine until, if we go into Excel and move into Sheet 2, where we don't have January to December in N5, we go back into the code, select our form and run, and you'll find that the combo box is actually empty because there are no values here in N5 to N16. If I want to use this user form on any sheet within my book, instead of referencing a set of cells using the cell references, I need to create a named range and use the named range. So if I cancel this, go back to Excel, sheet one, use my 12 there and give them a sensible named range. I'm going to call them Muths, M-T-H-S. Now when I'm in a different sheet, if I go back into the code, back to my combo box, back down to the row source and change it to my named range. 
and the named range refers to the particular sheet. So it will still be able to pick them up, even though I'm in sheet three, picks up the names of the months and places the value in A1 of the current sheet. So it's just a little thing to be aware of. If you're picking your values up from a sheet, use a named range, and then you can be in any of the sheets when you call the combo box on the user form. Otherwise, it will only look on the current sheet. Now there is another way of populating this combo box. So if I go into there and come down to row source and take that out, so we actually haven't got anything going into the row source, what we can do instead is use an add item property. CBO months, just need to remember that name. We select the form and go into the code. And um, what I'm after is using the user form initialize event. That creates me my sub procedure. So it's the user form underscore initialize. So effectively, this sets up the form. And what I want to do as part of any potential initialization is with CBO MTH. I've actually forgotten what I've called it. So we need to go back to the form. So view object. CBO months view code. So user form has got initialize CBO months or NTH. And then we need to put an end with. And between the with and end with, I'd like to add a number of items. Add item, you can see it appears there as a method, January. And effectively, I need to add all 12 months. The advantage of doing it this way, as opposed to picking it up from a sheet, is that a user cannot delete the cells because it's part of the code. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So that will add my 12 months. I know what the 12 months are, and I know how to spell them. At this stage, I'm thinking, perhaps I should have just done abbreviations for the months. But we're there. So now we're not going to use the cells on the sheet to populate our combo box. We're going to use the method add item. And we do that under the sub procedure user form underscore initialize. All we need to do is go back to the form and make sure that that works. And you can see quite happily still picking up the 12 months. Just to prove that it's picking up them from my add item. We will go and delete 12 months from the sheet. Then I rerun the form and you'll see it's still populating. So that's dot add item added into the underscore initialize part. So you need to select your form, view the code, add in user form underscore initialize, which we did by selecting the object from the left hand drop down and the trigger from the right. With CBO months, CBO months be my combo box dot add item for each of the items I wish to add. Now we also mentioned a list box. If I go back to the form, the list box property can be added from here. We come across, click and drag. Now the difference with a list box is that instead of having a drop down, it displays everything in a single area with an internal scroll bar if there are more items than are visible. It has pretty much the same properties, so I'm going to call it LST months, and we're going to use the initialize code, so LST months, to initialize the list box as well. So I'm going to take exactly the same with and end with, change that to LST months. That way, when we view our form, you'll see that it has the same 12 months in, but it has this scroll bar instead of a drop down. So that depending on how physically you set the height of this will depend on how much you can see. And then the scroll bar moves through the rest. Other difference between this box and a combo box is you can actually multiple select by using the control key. But you see, you have to turn that feature on, go back into the code, select my list box, come down to multiple select, it's currently set on single select, but I can set it on to multiple select. That when I run the form, you'll find you can then use the control key to multiple select months. 
or values depending on what's in there. So pretty much like the list box is just effectively a different variation on a theme and it will really depend on what you're trying to achieve, where you're getting your data from, what you want to do as to whether you'd prefer the combo box style or the list box style.